Hello class, this is the video for 14.5, which is the surface area section. And in this section, we only have five problems. Um, but as we keep going, the problems are gonna get a little bit more complicated. So then there's a little bit less of them just because they take so much time and brain power, right, to, to work out. So for this particular problem, it's asking for, and, and, and always you wanna watch the lecture slides, right? So you know where the formulas are coming from where the bounds are coming from, and then how we're putting everything together, okay? So for the very first problem, it does give me f of x, y equal to 3x plus y, and it's asking me for the surface area, so I need to know the formula for the surface area. And the surface area is a double integral with respect to some region, okay? Um, we don't know what the bounds are, it just depends on the region, and then your variables are dy dx, and the formula is the square root of one plus fx squared plus fy squared, okay? So because uh, my graph is in um, rectangular coordinates and these seem to be pretty simple functions for rectangular coordinates, right? It did say a triangle with vertices zero, zero, uh, four, zero, and, or four, zero, and then zero, four, okay? So this is the triangle that was created and that's my region there. Now, in order for me to get the equation of this, it is a y equals mx plus b. So y equals, it goes down four and over four. So down four over four means a negative one x, a negative one slope. Um, and then b is my y-intercept and my y-intercept is a positive four. So I just wrote it as four minus x. Now the x values, so if I use this for y, right, my y is in variables. I'm going from y equal to zero to this value here. So my bounds for y are gonna be from zero to four minus x. But for x, I'm just gonna be very uh, constants from zero to four. So it's like you have a little rectangle here and the rectangle spans from zero to four. It just little rectangles doing this to get the whole region, okay? Um, so then I need fx and I need fy. So the integral of this function with respect to x is just three and zero. And then derivative with respect to y is just gonna be zero and then three, okay? So um, I'm gonna start doing my integration. So if I square this and square this, that's nine and nine. Nine plus nine is 18 plus one is 19. So I have a square root of 19 in there. Um, but if I'm integrating a constant with respect to y, it's gonna be that constant times y. And then I have to evaluate it, my, my bounds. So I've pulled the square root of 19 out here. And when I evaluate this at my bounds, I do end up with just four minus x. So the integral of four is four x. The integral of x is x squared over two. When I plug in my bounds, I get 16 um, minus eight and then zero, zero. So 16 minus eight is eight, and I square root of 19 times eight, which is eight square root of 19. Now, number two, um, this one says I have a square with vertices of zero, zero, four, zero, zero, four, and four, four. And it's a square with these vertices. So this is the region, okay? Well, that means that Y is going from zero to four and X is going from zero to four. So they're both constants. You could switch the variables if you wanted to, but I always do dy first and then dx. It's just a preference. Um, but I do need to find fx and fy first. So the integral or the derivative of this with respect to x is 0, 8, 0, which is just 8. Derivative with respect to y is 0, 0, negative 3. So we get negative 3. So then that's 9 plus 64 plus 1. We got the square root of 74. And the integral of square root of 74 dy is just set square root of 74 times y evaluated at the bounds. So we end up with just four in here really. And the integral of four with respect to x is four x evaluated at the bounds. We get 16 minus zero, which is just 16. So we get 16 times the square root of 74. Now, number three is a little bit different, okay? Um, number three, is f of x, y equal to 36 plus x squared minus y squared. Um, and so if I were to let um, z equals zero, so I could see what was going on in the x, y plane, I would get zero equals 36 plus x squared minus y squared. 
which is um, y squared equals 36 plus x squared. Did I write this down right? Yeah, I did. Okay, good. Oh, no, no, I'm not doing that. I'm just letting, um, I'm paying attention to the region that they gave me, okay? So the region that they gave me is given there in the problem. So ignore that. That's only if they don't give you a region, okay? Or they tell you something weird, like you're in the first octave, okay? Here it didn't tell me I was in the first octave. It just told me this is my region. This x squared plus y squared equal to 81 is a circle with a radius 9, okay? But x squared plus y squared less than 81 means all of my radiuses could be anything less than nine, which basically means I'm every single circle with all the radiuses between zero and nine. Well, that basically fills in the whole circle then if it's every single radius, okay? So this is my region here. Now, because it's a circle, we probably wanna do things in polar coordinates. So first thing I did was I, I did find fx and fy. So the derivative of this with respect to x is zero, two x, zero. The derivative of this function with respect to y is zero, zero, and negative two y. And so if I wanna put everything in polar coordinates, absolutely everything has to be converted to polar coordinates, okay? So r, the region, is gonna be when radius is from zero to nine, and then since I wanna take that, that line from zero to nine and I wanna rotate it all the way around to cover the whole circle, I do have to go from zero to two pi, okay? So you basically take that little line, imagine it's like just this part of my pencil. And then as the angle goes around two pi, you start to get, um, you start to fill in with all these little lines, the whole circle, okay? The whole circle starts to get filled up, okay? I can't rotate my pin work, but you get the idea. So my r is gonna go from zero to nine. My theta is gonna go from zero to two pi. My function itself is going to have to be, um, and you really didn't need to convert the function itself because we don't really use that in the formula. All we use is fx and fy in the formula. So I didn't really need to do this. I'm not sure why I did. I just replaced x with r cosine theta and got this. I replaced y with r sine theta and got that, but it really is not necessary. Since I already took the derivatives, I'm just gonna make x r cosine theta and make y r sine theta. And then remember that when you're doing the change of variables, uh, dy dx becomes r dr d theta. So that means d theta has to go on the outside. So theta goes from zero to two pi, r goes from zero to nine, and then you have one plus fx, um, and it shouldn't be xy anymore because we changed the variables, right? It should be r and theta, r and theta. And so really what you're doing is you're doing fr and you're doing f theta, okay? Now, I just took fx and converted it, okay? But even if you took this and you went ahead and tried to do the derivative with respect to r, um, you would get 2r and then 2r, and then basically you just end up with 2r. Um, so this guy wouldn't even be here. And then the same thing here, if you take the derivative with respect to theta, that one would be a little bit more complicated. So I don't suggest that you actually um, change that part. I would just leave it like this, okay? So only convert after you've already found fx and fy so that you know you're gonna square this and square this plus the one in the, in the radical. So I just plugged in the x and I plugged in the y and I went for it, okay? So we got one plus two r cosine squared plus two r sine squared and then the dy dx becomes the r dr d theta. Now, uh, you can see a little bit over there. So this becomes four r squared cosine squared. This becomes four r squared sine squared. Um, and then if you factor out the four r squared, you'd get four r squared and in parentheses, you'd have cosine squared plus sine squared. But cosine squared plus sine squared is one. So really it's just four r squared times one, which is just four r squared. 
And so we did the u substitution. We let u equal what was in the radical. Then du would be zero plus eight r dr. Then that means that du over eight is gonna replace r dr. So over here, we get the integral um, zero to two pi, zero to nine, square root of u, and then du over eight. And then d theta is still out there. So the one eighth I took out to the front, and then this is u to the one half. So the integral is gonna be u to the three halves times two thirds. And remember, we still have to plug in our bounds, but they're for r, not for u. So at the back of what u was. So I took the two and reduced that to four, and then the four times the three is where this 12 came from. Um, or you can just type in a calculator, one eighth times two thirds, it should pop out one twelfth. So u was one plus r squared. So it's this raised to the three halves evaluated from zero to nine. So when I plug in nine, I get nine squared, which is 81 times four. What is 81 times four? Uh, 324 and then plus one is where we got 325 to the three halves power. When I plug in zero, I just get one plus zero, which is one to the three halves power. I don't know what this number is to the three halves power because it's not perfect, so I left it like that. But I do know one to any power is just one, okay? And then I'm trying to integrate that constant with respect to theta, so you just get theta um, from zero to two pi. And so when you evaluate that, you're just gonna essentially end up with two pi. So the two reduces with the 12 and you get pi over six times this 325 to three halves minus one, okay? So then now number four has this function and it does say the first octant. So they didn't tell me what the region is. They just gave me a clue what the region is. Um, so what we're gonna do is two things. We're gonna one, let this be my, my f of x, y function so that I can find f, x and f, y. Um, so if this is my f, x function, then the derivative with respect to x is just negative three and the derivative with respect to y is a negative two. So this becomes one plus negative three squared plus negative two squared, which is the square root of 14. Now the region though, if I wanna know what my bounds are for x and y, I have to let z equal to zero so I can figure out what's happening in the x, y plane. So let that equal to zero and then I'm trying to solve for y. So I moved over the two y, divided both of these by two and I ended up with this. So it has a um, y intercept of six and if I, and I didn't do this, I didn't graph this correctly, okay? But it has a y-intercept of six. And then when you go down three and over two, um, you will end up with another value. So let's see what happens. Let me actually graph it correctly. And so you can see the correct um, image here. It won't change how I evaluated it, but the picture is not like to scale and I wanna make it to scale. So this is my y-intercept, and then I go down one, two, three, and over two, and then down one, two, three, and over two. So let's say that was on the axis there. And so then the line goes like this. Now I'm only drawing what's in the first quadrant because it says the first octant. So that means that the, you're talking about above the xy plane, and only in the first quadrant of the xy plane. That puts you in the first quadrant, okay? Um, so then here, my bounds are gonna be y equal to zero to y equal to this line. So there's my bounds. And then the x values are from zero to four, obviously, because this went over two and then over two again, which landed me at four here. So um, zero to four is my x value bounds. Now, I did evaluate all of this in the formula, so I got square root of 14. The integral of a constant with respect to y is just that constant times y evaluated at my bounds. So I got that constant times six minus three halves x. Um, and then if I uh, integrate this with respect to x, this is a constant and I get six x minus three halves times x squared over two. Um, and then if I plug in my bounds, if I plug in four here, I get 24. If I plug in here, I get 16, but divided by four is four, and then times three is where the 12 came from. And 24 minus 12 is just 12, so I end up with 12 times the square root of 14, okay? Now number five is very similar, but I do have to do this one in polar coordinates. 
So it does tell me the first octant again, which means above the Z plane, but in the first quadrant of uh, your X, Y plane. So to figure out what the graph looks in the F, Y plane, I went ahead and let Z equals zero. So I got zero equal to nine minus X squared minus Y squared, moved over the X squared plus the Y squared. So this is obviously the graph of a circle with a radius three and center zero, zero. So I drew that, but because it said first octant, that meant I have to be in the first quadrant in the X, Y plane, which is just this region here, okay? So the radius does go from zero to three, which is what I have there, but I only want my little bar to go to here and that's it. So theta needs to go from zero all the way to pi over two, okay? And that's my theta. So remember, if we're gonna do it in polar coordinates, one, I need to write my function in polar coordinates. So I let f of x, y equal this, and then I, I uh, factored out this negative. So I have x squared plus y squared, and that is r squared. So really it's nine minus r squared. Um, and I know dy dx is r dr d theta, and I never did this part. I never did the dx or any of that. So I went ahead and did it here. So I have, and if I had done that up there, then I would have just converted those into polar coordinates as well. And I would have not integrated with respect to R or with respect to theta, okay? So you do have to choose one or two. Do you need, are you gonna do the partial derivatives before you convert? Or are you gonna convert first and then do the partial derivatives? You have to choose, okay? Since I did not do the partial derivatives up here, that's why I'm doing them down here after I've converted the function into polar coordinates, okay? If you do, it the other way around, you will still get the same answer, okay? If you do it correctly, of course, right? So when I take the derivative of this function here with respect to r, it's just negative 2r. When I take the derivative of this function with respect to theta, there are no thetas, so it's just zero. So then when I set up my square root, it's going to be f plus one partial derivative squared plus the other partial derivative squared. And instead of dy dx, we're doing r dr d theta. So in here, I'm gonna end up with one plus four r squared with r dr d theta on the side. So I let u equal one plus four r squared, du equals eight r dr, so du over eight equals dr. So I substituted that with u, and then all of this with du over eight. I took the one over eight out to the front, and then u to square to u is the same as u to the one half. So then I have one over eight, u to the three halves times two thirds evaluated for r equal to zero to three. This is not r, so we've got to convert back what r was, so, or what u was. So u was one plus four r squared, so it's actually one plus four r squared to the three halves evaluated from zero to three. So if I plug in three, I get r three squared, which is nine times four is 36, plus one is 37. So we have 37 to the three halves. When I plug in zero, I get zero, so one plus zero is just one to the three halves. I don't know what 37 of the three halves is because it's not perfect, and my calculator just gave me a decimal. Um, so I'm gonna leave that alone, but I do know that one to the three halves is one, okay? And I still have this one over 12 out there, so I just put it over 12. I do still have to integrate with respect to theta, and since we're just integrating d theta, it's just gonna be theta evaluated at our bounds. So it gives you pi over two minus zero, which is just pi over two, okay? Now the pi I left on the top and then the 12 times the two are multiplied together. And I got this 24 at the denominator. And I just typed it in exactly like that because it didn't ask me to round to a certain decimal place. So it did want the exact answer, okay? And so we have that in there. But essentially that is what it, how it works. If you have a, a circle, you wanna use polar coordinates, but if you don't have a circle, um, don't use polar coordinates, okay? Um, other than that, that is the end of this section, and I will see you in the next video.